Hi guys, for this what we're going to do is I have a data set and we're going to decide whether this data set should be modeled by a linear or an exponential model. Um, I am going to use the TI-84 to help us with this. Um, this process, it can be kind of difficult to see, so we're going to use some analysis tools. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to put this information into our L1 and this information into our L2. Um, I have already done that, so I, when I get to the screen, if you want to, after I show you how to get there, um, you can pause the video and put this in. So what we're going to do is I'm going to grab my calculator and you're going to hit the stat button and edit. And this is where you would type in L1, L2. Remember that if you want to get rid of the information, you highlight up here and then hit clear. I don't want to hit clear because I want the information. Okay, so if you need to pause the video to put all of this information into L1 and L2, all you have to do is simply type it in. After you are done with that, what we are going to do is we are going to run a regression analysis in here. We're going to look at the scatter plot because it's always important to look at the scatter plot. So let's start there. Um, to look at the scatter plot of this, what we're going to do is hit second and y equals. I'm going to choose plot one for this, and I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. I'm going to use my x list as L1, my y list as L2, and scatter plot is already selected, so I don't have to change anything on this screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the window because of the fact that um, my window for this one my values, if we look at it, it goes from 0 through 10 on X. So I only want the positive quadrant, but I want to make sure that it encompasses that. And from 6,500 up to 9,800. So I'm going to hit the window button. And my X min, I'm going to choose to be 0. And my X max, I'm going to choose to be 11, just so I can go a little bit past it. I'm going to go ahead and count by 1. That's what the X scale stands for. And then I'm going to choose 6,000 as my X minimum. And I'm going to choose 10,000 as my, my Y maximum. And for this one, I am going to count by 1,000. So if we look at our scatter plot, it's very hard to tell whether this is linear or exponential. Like just looking at it alone doesn't really give us a clear picture. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a couple of different things. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to come up with the linear model and paste it into here. So to do that, what we're going to do is hit the stat button. And we're going to go over to calculate. And it doesn't matter which linear regression you use, depending upon the course that you're in. Um, most of the time in statistics, we use option eight. Most of the time in algebra, we use option four. So it really just kind of depends on the course that you're in. I'm going to choose option eight. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use L1, L2. If this does not come up for you, the default for your LinReg is L1, L2, you do want to do the steps that I'm doing on the regression equation right here to get Y1. So after you hit the LinReg, if this doesn't come up for you, just follow the steps that I'm doing on the store regression equation, as long as you're using L1 and L2. So what we want to do is I'm going to go to VARS, and I'm going to go to Y VARS, and let me go back, sorry, let me go to VARS, and Y VARS, that's where I went wrong. Hold on, from the top. Let me go back to stat calc. I hit the wrong button and I confused myself. Eight, and under store regression equation, we wanna do VARS, and then arrow over to the Y VARS and choose option one, and one again. So you want Y1 to show up here. What this does is it stores your regression equation into your, um, y equals screen. And then you're going to hit calculate. And I forgot to talk about diagnostics. See, I don't have my diagnostics on. What I want to look at is r and r squared. So to turn that on in this calculator, all I have to do is click the mode and go down to turn diagnostics on. If you have an older calculator, you do have to do this the old fashioned way where you hit second and zero and scroll all the way until you find diagnostics on and hit enter. Um, and that will also turn it on. So what it does when I do this is if I hit second entry, it'll pull up the last information. Um, for those of you that don't have that screen, this is what you could have it look like. If you use L1 and L2, you don't have to do the L1 comma L2. You can just go directly to the Y1. And so then I'm going to hit enter on here and it's going to give me done. And what it does is it tells us that R is 
0.316, which is a really high correlation coefficient. So I'm going to go ahead and write this down. Um, you can either write it as y hat equals 6440 plus 326 times x, or if you want to put it in context, we can say that the tuition, the predicted predi tuition, is equal to 6440 plus 326 times the year. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and write down r and r squared on this because we want to compare this in a minute. So 0.98636 is my r squared and r is 0.99316. Okay, um, so if I go back into here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit graph. Because I stored it in the y equals, it will put my line in here. And with this, it looks like it hits most of the point. It's very, very hard to see what's going on. So what we can do is we can look at the residuals plot. The residuals plot just basically allows us to see um, what our residuals are doing. Our calculator automatically calculates them every time you do a regression analysis. So I do have to look at this directly after um, running this one before I do the regression or the exponential regression to see what it does. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to second stat plot. And I'm going to go to plot two. And on plot two, what I want to do is I'm going to turn this on. I still want to have scatter plot, but this time I want my X list to be L1. And I want my Y list. I'm going to go to second and list. And at the very bottom, number seven, it says resid. Those are the residuals plot. So what it's going to do is it's going to do a residuals plot for me. Um, so this graphs the residuals. Remember the residuals are your distance that each of your points are from the line of best fit. Um, because I have stat plot one turned on and I also have my regression equation turned on, I'm going to come to here the y equals screen. So I just hit the y equals screen and I'm going to turn off my plot one and also my equation. So I'm going to turn off y1 so it doesn't graph it. And I'm also going to turn off plot one. Okay, now when I hit graph, what it does, I'm going to hit zoom and nine. It doesn't show me anything because of the way that the windows are set up. You can see right here, this represents the line of best fit, that there is a clear curve that was not apparent in the actual scatter plot with the line of best fit. And so whenever you see a curve like this in your residuals, this is bad. This is not something that you would want to use. So this right here, even though my R and my picture both showed that I should use a line. My residuals plot tells me a different story. So what I want to do now is I want to go look at the regression for exponential. So I'm going to go ahead and quit out of here. I'm going to go back to my y equals and I'm going to go ahead and turn off plot two because I want to run the other thing. I'm going to repeat the same steps. Um, but this time I'm going to do it for exponential regression. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit stat and go to calculate. And I'm going to go down to exponential regression. Um, exponential regression is zero. Um, so I'm going to select zero for exponential regression. I'm going to do the same thing. This time I want to store my regression equation in a different place. So I'm going to store it in um, Y2. So I'm going to hit vars, go to Y vars, um, function, and choose option two, which is Y2. And what it does is now it stores it in the y equals y2. And so what I want to do is I'm going to go back to my y equals screen. Um, I'm going to write this down really quickly so that we can compare the two models. Um, because you can do this without looking at the residuals too. You can look at your values. Um, for the exponential, we don't look at r in exponential because r, remember, just tells us how linear something is. Um, so for this one, what we would have is the exponential not model 6539.46, where this represents the initial value. And my growth rate of 1.041 per year represents um, my growth rate. You could also write this as y hat equals 6539.46 times 1.041 to the x power. A lot of times we put it in context. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and write down r squared on this one. 
R squared, and I got these directly from the calculator, is 0 0.99087. And you can see right here, this R squared is higher than this R squared. The R squared tells you the variability in your data. So 98.6% of the data is explained by this equation, but 99.087% is explained by this one. So this one has a higher R squared value. If this is higher, then that tells you that this model is a better model. Um, we can also look at the residuals plot of this. So let me go back to the residuals plot for this one. Um, if I go back to my graph, I'm going to go ahead and hit graph, except for let me go back to my y equals. Sorry, I forgot that I didn't turn it back on. Um, if I go back to y equals, my computer's thinking I'm doing too much. Okay, maybe I can go back to y equals. Okay. So if I go back to y equals, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn plot one back on. And I'm just going to hit zoom and nine just so that it sets the windows up in a good place. And so what you can see is that what it's doing now is it gives us the scatter plot. And it's also going to put our regression equation in there. And if you notice, it goes through more of the points. There's more scatter on both sides. So what I want to do now is I want to look at the residuals plot. So I'm going to hit second y equals. And I'm going to turn plot two back on. Because I did a different regression analysis, it's automatically going to um, change it to the last one that I did. So it'll turn on the residuals for the last one. Since I already had it set up, I'm going to go back to plot two. And I'm going to go over here and change this to equals. And then I'm going to hit zoom nine again. That's zoom stat, and you can see that the scatter is a little bit better. There's still a little bit of a curve, but we want to curve an exponential, um, but it does straighten it out just a little bit. It gives us more scatter on both sides. Um, I would go off of the R squared also because, like I said, the R squared, the higher the R squared, the more the variability is explained by the data. I know that I covered a lot of topics in here. If you have questions, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching.